Hey there YouTube. So I figured I'd finally put this video out. I've been meaning to do it for a while. Um, if you're looking at this video, I imagine you're either purchased a KLX 300 or you're looking at purchasing the KLX 300 and just kind of comparing to see what you have out there as options. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say this once I start going everything, I'll post links to it all. So that way, if you guys are interested in and where I got everything, so that way you can see it. Um, <clears throat> huge shout out to Casey, out, Casey outside. For those of you that um, are looking at KLX 300 or the Suzuki DRX, DRZ, and then um, KTM's, uh, his channel is huge. You'll, you'll notice um, with most of my upgrades, I will say the majority of it came from Casey outside. So huge props to him. Um, was also a huge decision to me going the route for the KLX and then also Nolan rides. Nolan also does quite a cool uh, channel so reach out to those guys if you want to uh, see some good stuff. So for me um, I started looking I was looking for another 450X plated in uh, for California um, and then the older I get the realize I don't need as much power as I had once before so I started looking um, at the KLX and then also the CRF 300L from Honda. Those are the two that seems like pretty much everybody goes back and forth on deciding. Um, so ultimately I ended up going with the Kawasaki and I'm glad I did. Um, probably the biggest thing, I, you know, the power plants are pretty equal. I think people will say that the Honda may be a little bit better, but the suspension, everything you read about from all the reviews, the videos, everybody pretty much talks about the suspension on the Kawasaki being better. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and show the upgrades that I've done. I'll fire it up, kind of go over that. Like I said, I'll put links to everything I purchased. So that way, if you guys have any questions or you want to see what I had uh, purchased, I'll have all that on there. All right, so here it is. This is my 2022 KLX 300. Um, picked it up here locally in California. Um, done quite a bit of upgrades to it. And so that's what I'm going to kind of go through, try to do it front to back, head to toe type thing. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that have one, pretty much all the bikes, you can pretty much know that the headlights are not gonna work that well. Um, the halogen bulb, yeah, eh, that's so, so, but um, this definitely um, need to be upgraded. So I did the Oxido um, LED headlight in there, works out great. Um, from there, I went with the Tusk LED turn signals. Uh, the turn signals that come on here originally, you know, they stick out pretty far. Went ahead and took those off, uh, put the tusks on. Um, I did do the hyper flash module and that's tied it in with my TST rear fender eliminator kit. And so you guys will see from there, um, got all that done on there. Um, <clears throat> coming around here on for the handlebars and that. So the stock ones that I had, they, <clears throat> it, it's okay. I mean, nothing to write home about. I did go with the Pro Tapers, the CR Highs. Um, <clears throat> go on pretty straightforward, super easy to do. Um, huge difference when riding out there. Um, easier when you're standing up, just you know, a, a lot more support for it. I went with the Circa, the uh, Pro Bend hand guards. Thing I like about these is you can pop these off and they have vented ones, so during the summer, if you wanna put those on, it's great. Um, during the winter, if it's a little bit colder, you can go ahead and leave that. Also, I did go with the Pro Taper, the pillow top, um, the uh, uh, top grips. And I will say, I am now a huge believer, you can see right there, in uh, the bolt-on, the clamp-on pillow tops. It's no more of having to deal with the glue, all that kind of stuff. You can just go ahead and put them on there, clamp it, and it is literally pretty much straightforward. Um, on the controls, I did go ahead and go with the MZS on those. Uh, not anything fancy, as I'm sure a lot of you are finding out, it's kind of hard to find um, accessories for these uh, still a little bit. They're getting quite a bit better, but um, you know, they were, they were kind of hard when it was first coming out. So I went ahead and got those, the MZS, the clutch and the brake levers. Um, if you see, I do have the mounts for the double take mirrors. One there. And then the other one right there. Um, I do have those on there, but you also can see I've got these Zephyl. Um, they're basically mountain bike or bicycle mirrors on there. Um, they're rubberized, they, they go on, they stay pretty good. Um, they meet the intent of the law. 
I can see behind me underneath my uh, underneath my arm, so that works out really well. Um, but I will tell you, if you take this on the highway at all, they don't do anything. So I did get the double take mirrors. I don't have them on there right now. They are nice. That way you can keep them up, fold them down, uh, do whatever you want. And like I say, the view on those is way better, a lot better from there. Um, that's pretty much all I have up here on the controls. Um, the other thing that's nice about these turn signals and Casey outside talks about it, they'll bolt right up to the factory location. So I went ahead and spliced it in, uh, heat shrunk it, soldered it, you know, so that way it's a good connection from there. Um, so really good on that. Um, probably next, let's see, working our way down. I did go with the ricochet, uh, the skid plate down here, the ricochet. If you get the factory one, you'll see it's kind of cute, little piece of aluminum that they have. It's not gonna protect much from anything. So um, yeah, I went with that and very pleased with it. Probably one of the biggest gripes you'll hear and what I heard of when I first did it was the, um, the foot pegs. These are the IMS um, foot pegs, the super stock foot pegs. I think they're 273113 on there. Huge difference for that. Um, quite a bit better um, than the factory. I will say one of the first ones I had, it was um, your feet will slide off. They're just they're just not that good of a of a foot peg. So these end up working out really well from there. Um, so I'd highly recommend that. The one thing I'm still trying to figure out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do is the foot brake. Um, I find myself falling off of that quite a bit, my foot not being able to find it, um, but <clears throat> you know, it works. So for now, I'll just make do with that. Coming on back, yep, pretty much kind of the standard for these is the uh, Delkovic uh, carbon fiber. I did one with the carbon fiber just to kind of match uh, the looks of the motorcycle. Um, that is their 14 inch carbon fiber muffler. Um, the one thing I will say, um, you go in a lot of forums and that, and I had the issue um, some to where uh, I took the snorkel out. And when I had the snorkel out and I put this in, it would stall out on me. Anytime I'd come to a stop sign, it would stall. It wouldn't want to run. I'd have to kick a little bit of throttle. Not that big of a deal, but kind of a big deal, especially when you're out trail riding. Um, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is grabbing brake and at the same time trying to twist a little throttle to keep it alive. So I did end up putting in um, the bigger Kawasaki snorkel, the 14073, 1577, I'll have the link to that. Once I put that in, it helped quite a bit. The other thing I in the forums I was reading, it seems like the Delcovix, that issues primarily on California models with the smog issues. Um, these bikes do have a one-year warranty, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as is until the warranty expires. And then once that's done, I'll probably go ahead and do the EVAP canister removal kit from Smart Moto, the O2 sensor and the pair valve removal kit as well. So just one thing to uh, think about. Um, <clears throat> the exhaust sounds great. Um, I don't have anything in it. I keep it wide open. And then, but I also have, um, I'll show you guys here in a few on the back, how I ended up doing to handle the uh, spark arrestor issue. Cause here in California, uh, you take this on federal lands, they, they will snag you for that pretty regularly. Um, okay, so coming on to the back, here's one thing that I ended up copying um, Casey outside. Um, I went ahead and did the TST, or excuse me, the Mayer, the 97 to 07 KLX 300R rear fender. Um, I think all of you know and recognize the, the fender that comes with it. And once you take the fender laminator kit, it actually looks pretty good. But once I saw KC put it on his, um, I was impressed with the looks of it. So I went ahead and did the same thing, ordered it in black. It bolts right on. And so everything, you know, bolted up great from there. So I kind of like it. I like the looks of it. Um, coming to the back, I did go with the TST Industries. You can see it right here. There's the TST Industries third brake light on their Eliminator kit. Third brake light, excuse me on that. It's their Fender Eliminator kit. Um, with the built-in turn signals on um, for the license plate. I just have a rubber grommet. I do those on pretty much all my vehicles. They do have one that you can angle it, um, but all I did is I just put it in my vise and bent it to the degree that I wanted. And so that ends up going pretty good like that. And so, like I said, everything's tucked in there. I like the clean look of it. 
I mean, all of it goes really good from there. So probably the next biggest thing on here, the rack. Um, these come with just a small basic kit that um, you can have some basic tools. You can pretty much fit like a single Coors Light in there. Um, I could fit my SIG 365 in there, um, but you really can't carry much else. So I knew I wanted something. I wasn't sure which direction I was gonna go. So I ended up buying the Precision Motorcycle Rack. Um, everything bolts up perfectly, um, mounts to the fender really well, and it tucks down there. Um, Tusk is another really good one, but my whole thing is, and you'll go to Casey outside and you'll see how he uh, modified his to make it fit a little bit better on there. So, but you know, for the most part, it tucks down good. So I have that mounted. And then from there, I ended up going with the Pelican 1400 case. I was going back and forth trying to figure out which one I wanted. And for me, it ended up just coming down to the size. Um, it actually, it fits the best. Um, and so size wise and dimensions, it just worked for me. So as you can see on there, on top, I also mounted the Super ATV Mole rack. Um, I was going back and forth on if I wanted to do the IMS, the fuel tank, but um, you'll, KC talks about it some about, you know, it's, it's almost $400 now. And it's seven tenths of a gallon worth $400. To me, it really wasn't. So I ended up doing the Pelican case with the Super ATV Universal Mole Rigid Panel. And then I went with the Nelson Riggs fuel bottle holder. This isn't on how I want it set, um, but it, it works for now. You can see how I mounted everything. Sorry about that, I got a phone call. Um, so I ended up going with this Riggs gear. Um, inside, it's just a one and a half liter thing of fuel. So I figured this is gonna work more than enough when you're out there. Uh, one of the complaints you hear people talk about on the Kawasaki's is the lack of a fuel gauge. Um, so it, you know, that obviously that is kind of a concern from there. And so, but like I was saying with this, gives you a little bit of fuel if you're out in the middle of nowhere, um, should be able to get you back to, uh, to wherever you need to go. So like I said, I'm gonna figure out a different way to mount that on there. Um, so then it comes to the Pelican case. So I went with this, like I said, everything's mounted in there. Um, I, in, I got this mag pole, uh, it's Velcroed on here and that way it has all my insurance documents, registration, all that kind of stuff. You can see the stainless steel hardware again, everything's silicone. Um, inside here, this is the original tool kit that comes from there. I'm a huge, I've got a, my box over there. Um, I've got, I'm a big fan of Tecton tools. Um, they've just done right by me. So I'm gonna end up building a kit out of the Tectons. Um, these fish, spark arresters. I like this, um, the Dekel, the Delkevic, Delkovic, however you wanna say it. Um, they sound great, um, but so with this, um, when you run it in here, it really doesn't choke it down that much. It, it meets the law um, to having the spark arrestor. It has three set screws. You can see that holds it in there. And so basically all you do is I put it in a couple times to make sure and um, it mounts right in, keeps it, meets the intent of the law. But then that way, when I'm just riding around, I just keep it open and keep that in here. Um, so same thing on here, all I ended up doing was bolting it down. Again, stainless steel hardware, silicone, everything, so that way it's sealed up. But this way you can, you know, you can carry some stuff, have, uh, have access, you can carry a few things in there, and then also you can lock it if need be. And so um, what I ended up doing on the locks, I went with these uh, Nanox. And the reason I went with these, the TSA, they're for luggage. But the thing I liked about them is if you look here, once they're locked, there really isn't a lot of room to get in there to cut them off. I mean, they're, they're pretty well, you know, they keep it pretty secure from there. Um, I do have a second one. So just when I run around town, I have the one on if I'm running in and out. And then if I'm gonna travel anywhere significant, then, you know, I'll put the second one on. So this has been a huge uh, increase of usability for me. I really like that. And so it's, uh, all of that works really well and I'd highly recommend it. Um, what else have I got? I think that's pretty much it for, oh, duh. I went with the seat concepts. 
So Seat Concepts went ahead and put the new seat on there. I went riding up to on High Mountain Road to Pozo Saloon. So everyone here on the Central Coast knows where that's at. And it rained that day. And it uh, the, the factory seats, they get pretty slippery. Um, I like grip, and so I did get it. I got an inch lower. Um, I don't know why, just did. And so, but that seat, night and day difference, great company. Like everything else, it takes a little bit longer to get, get everything. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything on there. The other thing, the tires, um, pros and cons. The tires are good, but um, that same day I went riding up to Pozo Saloon, it rained that day and um, you, it, this thing likes to push, they're heavy. Um, it's not like my old 450. It's definitely not like my son's, the 125R. I mean, it, it, it will push. And so um, I was gonna go with the Michelin, the, what are they, the AC 10s, or I can't remember the name, but they discontinued those. So kind of uh, stuck on that. Um, that's pretty much all that I have planned for it. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the smog equipment and everything else, but I'm gonna wait for the warranty to go up. Um, you know, it just right now, if I had to take it in for warranty work, just put the factory exhaust on and, and I'd be good. So I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and fire it up so you guys can hear how it sounds. I mean, everybody has heard the exhaust, but also I'll show you, you know, with the turn signals and all that kind of stuff. So. So that's it with the sound. I imagine that might have muffled it. But here you can see that's with the turn signal. But like I said, it tucks in there really sweet. So I, I really like how that looked. Um, that's pretty much all that I got for this. Uh, you guys have any questions or anything, put them in there. I'll get back and respond. Uh, like I said, go look at Casey outside. He covers a lot of stuff really well. So does Nolan Rides. There's a bunch of information out there. Um, like I said, if you have any questions and that, Feel free to reach out, I'll respond, and I'm gonna put a link to everything in there, and hopefully this video helps some people. Um, my first one, I'm gonna put some more stuff up.